So there's been a ton going on on my computer and in my brain about what we can do to be part of the solution because you Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This week, I wanna talk about last week because last week was bananas in my world. So if you regularly follow the channel, you know I dropped a kind of a different video last week where I shared a lot of personal stuff that I don't really get into usually. If you're brand new here, um, I'll link it below and you can go see all of the reasons why I quit teaching. When I hit that video, I definitely took a deep breath before I hit upload because it was scary, but boy, I'm so glad I talked to you guys about this stuff because my world has just exploded in the last week and my brain is whirling with implications for what all of this could be. So as you know, I have left the classroom and in doing that, I have heard from hundreds, literally hundreds of teachers from around the world about kind of just saying, yeah, girl, me too, <laughs> saying we're having the exact same problems here. And it's been so um, like relieving. It's been a like just oxygen knowing that I'm not alone in feeling all the things that were making me wild in my head and to know that you're facing those exact same things. So I got tons and tons of comments. I tried to reply to everybody. If you left a comment and I didn't reply to you in person, I'm so sorry. I get lost in the weeds. I'm, I'm okay with the text stuff, but I'm not great with the social media part of it. And sometimes YouTube gives me like a thread and then somebody will make a reply to something I said and somebody else makes a reply and I, I lose all of those because then I go back and I can't find it again. Oh my gosh, it was so, it's, it's, it's a thing. So if I didn't respond to you, I promise, <laughs> I saw it and I wanted to, or I did and I went back and you were gone. So those sorts of things happen. But my big takeaways are a couple of things from this past week. One, we're all in the same boat. I had thought that this was kind of a, a me thing that was growing, like maybe something about my personality or the individual schools I was at. Maybe I was doing something wrong. You know, maybe it's because I was doing all the online stuff and that was adding to the pressure. Um, no, that it is an us problem. I thought that maybe it was an American thing. Oh, no, 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 no. In the first 48 hours of me dropping that video last week, I heard from the planet earth that this is a problem. Um, I wrote down the, the list of um, countries because there were so many. My teacher friends in Turkey, Australia, France, China, the Czech Republic, Bulgaria, Switzerland, uh, Canada, England, even Afghanistan. I have teachers reaching out to me from across the globe saying that the problems that I was facing are the same problems that they're facing in their schools also. So that just melted my brain because we got to do something about this. We got to find a way to do it better because it, it's not serving humanity. And so my, my brain has been whirling and twirling about all of that. Another takeaway is the, the huge value that this actually has. I have been reluctant on YouTube for several years because it just, it's hard for me to, to figure out how to do this well. And I don't think I do it well. I, there's a lot of other people who have a lot of other cooler things going on. Um, but at the end of the day, this is an incredibly powerful way for us to connect. And I'm seeing that now that I have the, I can, I can pull my head up and sort of look around and see what's happening. And this way of us communicating is real and it is powerful and it is important. So that's another conclusion I found. I'm really glad I'm back on YouTube. It's hard to feel connected when I'm not on a campus with other teachers. COVID has made it hard for me, for me to feel connected because I'm living in a new neighborhood here in Tennessee and I usually meet the neighbors and become friends and we have walking buddies and you know, we have like a glass of wine on someone's patio. No, we don't do that in COVID world anymore. So finally, finally, I have one friend across the street because she kind of peeked out the window at the same time I peeked out the window, but it's really hard. And so I feel like now I have hundreds of friends on the YouTube channel. So thank you for making me feel connected again. Another benefit that I've been enjoying is the exchange of ideas with everyone and the exchange of resources. So um, different 
uh, commenters have reminded me of the work of Alfie Cohen, who I had read like eight years ago. He has a great essay. He's actually done a whole body of work on why grading actually hurts learning. And the name of that essay is The Case Against Grading, if you want to Google it. Um, a friend from high school, Vince, hey Vincent, uh, he uh, reached out to me on Instagram and let me know about the work of Seth Godin, who uh, has a whole sort of manifesto called What Are Schools For? And then uh, uh, another uh, YouTube commenter let me know about the work of Sarah Zerwin, who is a high school English teacher in Boulder, Colorado. She and her colleagues have been working almost for 10 years on removing grading from the classroom, which goes a long way towards increasing student enthusiasm for the work, which then helps reduce teacher burnout because of the way that they're structuring it. By the way, I have ordered Sarah's book. Uh, it's called Pointless, uh, and I will give it a read. And as soon as I've gone through it, I will definitely share my thoughts here and on the blog. So there's been a ton going on on my computer and in my brain about what we can do to be part of the solution. Because you know me, I am all about solutions. I don't like to complain unless I have a plan. And so I don't have a plan to fix like the global public education system. Although maybe I will someday soon. Hmm. Keeping in mind, of course, that not everything works for every person in every situation. Take what I have to say, take what's useful, throw out what's not, tell me I'm wrong, I'll leave it in the comments. Just like, let's just talk about ideas about how we can make things better. So first things first, it's oxygen mask time. You need to take care of you. You need to do whatever you need to do to get through the end of this worst school year ever. Whatever it is, you're gonna make it to summer. And then once you're in summer and you've had a chance to decompress, then you can regroup, come up with some strategies. Then you'll know a little bit better about what you're facing in the fall, right? So for now, treat yourself well. Eat good food, drink your water, take your vitamins or your medicines, um, move your body, get outside in the sunshine, even if you're just sitting in a chair quietly and meditating for a few minutes, but really it's, it's time for you to like reclaim your health and yourself. Next, maybe you can't change the system. I get it. You can though change your mindset and you can change how you're running things in your classroom to better fit you and your students' needs. And by this, I mean things like um, however much you're grading right now and it's weighing you down, man, cut that load in half. Maybe just stop grading altogether. Mm -hmm. um, stop worrying about the state test. If you're doing the test, which I think is ridiculous in this year, just don't even think about it. Honestly, I stopped teaching to the test a long time ago. My numbers were always all over the place. It is what it is. Um, it didn't, it didn't make me less effective as a teacher. And in this year, especially you could just blame COVID. If you're teaching in person, you can actually change the layout of your room. Sometimes rearranging the desks, moving things and trying something different can just be a little bit of juice to get you through the next few weeks, to get you through, to get you through, to get you through the next few weeks. Reclaim class time so that you can fold in the things that you think matter in your curriculum. Yes, of course, we have to teach the core works, of course, but we also can supplement with things that are a higher interest to you. If it's interesting to you, it very likely will be interesting to the students. And I've found some hacks over the years that have helped me with especially, first of all, I don't think in COVID with remote learning, we should be teaching full length novels. I think that that's just asking for dreariness. I prefer short, week, short works for this season in life. If though you are teaching longer works and you're in person, I would challenge you that maybe not every full length novel is worthy of the six weeks it's gonna to take to work kids through that. So for example, for Julius Caesar, there have been years in certain classes where I was like, you know what? They're gonna get what they need from Caesar by us really like picking apart the rhetorical analysis of three speeches and then that's it. Oftentimes we never even read the last act because I can just summarize that and the kids get it. With Huckleberry Finn, you have my permission to like stop once Huck and Tom get to Uncle Silas's farm. You can cut the last quarter of the novel. You can summarize it. 
It's not, it takes so long to slog through that stuff and it's not worthwhile. Um, when I brought 20 time into my freshman classes, I had to find a way to make room for it. Um, 20 time is a project-based learning passion project. It's my all time favorite thing. I'll link down some materials there, but to fit that project in for my kids, I had to cut something and I ended up pretty much boiling down our study of the Odyssey to half of the chapters or what they call books that are in that epic poem. Did any of my kids suffer because they didn't read all of the Odyssey? No, no, they did not. But so many of them benefited from what we could do with the 20 time. So you have my permission to boil down things that are slowing down the learning and to increase time for things that you like. Like maybe you want to fold in podcasts and narrative non narrative nonfiction. Um, you know, I've, I've talked on the blog about, you know, imagined life podcast, um, the 21 chump street links, 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 um, just cool stuff. Um, you know, you, maybe you want to introduce them to the twilight zone. I did a whole thing in January about the twilight zone and cool episodes that I think relate to modern issues. Like, that's the stuff I want to bring to kids and talk about. And that's the stuff that if, if I'm excited about it, then they're going to be excited about it. And then I look forward to the next class and then they look forward to the next class. And it just becomes this virtuous circle of awesomeness. And besides, a lot of the times when we're reading those longer works, the kids aren't even reading them anyway. My own daughter, we were sitting around talking about this issue this past week and she came over to visit and brought her new puppy. And we were talking about all the, the things I was thinking about with this reaction to the YouTube video. And she's like, mom, I never even read the Odyssey in high school. So here's a daughter of an English teacher. We, she and I have read chunks of the Odyssey together. We have acted out things. I've like had her marinate in Greek mythology. If any human child should want to read the Odyssey, it would be my child. She spark noted her way through freshman year, really sorry to her freshman teachers. Um, but she's like, it's just too hard to get everything done that they have to get done. So that'll probably be a topic for another day about grading and all that. But basically they're not doing it anyway. So let's just move forward to the good stuff that is actually going to move us forward in the learning. So yeah, I think you, the teacher should be having fun in the classroom. You can teach the standards. I have been common core aligned in everything I've ever done. Here are three standards for reading, writing, listening that you can use as umbrella standards for pretty much any reasonable thing you want to do in the classroom. If you are wrung out, tired, crispy, burnt out, which I think a lot of us are, it's okay just to say, you know what? I cannot be that club advisor. I cannot uh, volunteer my time to uh, uh, coordinate the musical. You know, if, if they want to pay us, and you want to agree to take on that extra job responsibility, great. But too much free labor is happening at our schools and it's weighing us down and, and we need to set some healthy boundaries too. Ignore everyone who has an opinion about how you should run your classroom. If you know what's right for your kids, then you should do that thing. You shouldn't worry about the, uh, the teacher of the year selection committee. They don't matter. You shouldn't worry about the opinion of the Facebook group, they don't matter. The other teachers down the hall, let them squawk. You shouldn't even worry about me. You don't care what I think. Do what is right for you and your kids. And at the end of the day, you will sleep soundly. When things feel stale and I'm feeling tired, I'm a big fan of doing something new, something completely different. Feed yourself with ideas and then take a risk by building something, creating something, trying something new. I often, well, that's why I did 20 time, right? Back in the day. And again, links below, but I often told the kids, honestly, I don't think this thing in our world is working. I want to try something else. Will you go with me on this path? Will you essentially be my guinea pigs as I try this new technique, this new way of grading, this new activity, this new thing? Will you go on the ride with me? And the kids are like, yeah, we will. No, you're not alone. When you're feeling run down, go to last week's video and read through those comments. You are not alone, my friend. We are all struggling through these same things. So for me, oddly, that feels comforting, which is kind of like messed up, but it's true. So cut yourself some slack. You're doing great at a really, I'd say impossible job right now. Lower your expectations of yourself do what feels right and true and good for the kids and cut the kids some slack too, right? Like 
just understand that our mental health is really important right now. And so anything we can do to increase learning and lower stress is great. I'm a fan of right now, open book, open note tests, nothing with memorization. We're just in a different world. And so I'm starting to think about ways I've done things in the past that are antiquated. They, they don't fit today's learner and what today's learner actually needs. So I've got a lot of brainstorming ideas happening. I don't know where all that's going to go, but for you and for your kids right now, just grace, give everyone grace and just enjoy each other and learning again. Finally, my last nugget for this week is to let yourself dream again. Start daydreaming about how great teaching could be. I sometimes when I'm in a relationship and I'm wondering if it's time to stay or go, I ask myself, can I see a time where this relationship is better? Right? Or am I so worn out by it that even if things get better, I won't be able to let go of the damage. I've used this in love relationships from my twenties. I've used this in friendships that have gone through, you know, different seasons. Um, and in a weird way, I've used it with teaching because I do feel like this career I have, I'm having this like love affair with it. It's a relationship I'm having with teaching. I'm not ready to let it go. Right now I need a pause <laughs> and I'm sort of trying to figure out what is going to be next, but continuing this work, talking with you about it, that's part of the love affair of being in education. And so I'm not ready to let it go. I'm not ready to just shut everything down, turn off the blog, you know, walk away. I'm just not there because I'm dreaming of a time where it's going to be better. And I don't know if that's just on a tiny little micro level with me and a few kids at a micro school in Nashville, or if that's going to be like on a global platform where teachers have tools to do the things they need to do with our kids. And society has caught up to understanding why we need to break the system as it is and replace it with something new. I don't know, but I am a dreamer. And I'm not the only one. <laughs> so leave comments below. What are some hacks that are helping you get through this difficult season? What's some advice you have for others? What do you need help with? I'm still down there. I'm commenting. I'm helping all I can. Um, and I'll be back next week with another you know, like talking point, something that's on my mind in education. Uh, join me as I figure out what I'm doing here on YouTube because I do not know. All right, uh, that's it. Uh, subscribe to the channel. You'll get notifications. Click those buttons, go watch some other videos. There's lots of things to do. Check in with me. I hope you're well. Let's keep teaching on everyone. Bye.